It's time for Hands on Mac. I'm Leo Laporte. Today, 12 free fonts you probably already have. Hands on Macintosh comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remotely, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash H-O-M. Hey, everybody, time for Hands on Mac, a deep dive into the Macintosh operating system and ecosystem. I'm Leo Laporte, a Macintosh fanatic since 1984. Uh, the Mac has changed a lot, I have to say, over the years, but it's still an awful lot of fun to play with. Now, I hope you've all updated to Mac OS X Catalina. That's 10. Point fifteen, our 15th edition of Mac OS X. Catalina is great in so many ways. There are some good reasons not to upgrade. For instance, if you uh, like to use 32-bit applications, aka old applications, you aren't going to want to upgrade. But here's a reason you might want to upgrade. There are as many as a dozen hidden fonts in Mac OS OS X. Let's talk a little bit about fonts because it's one of the things that from day one, made the Macintosh special. And it all goes back to Steve Jobs and his days at Reed College. You might remember that Steve dropped out after a semester at Reed, but he stuck around and audited classes. He'd actually go to classes uh, just because he loved learning. One of the classes uh, it is said that he went to was a calligraphy class, and that's where he fell in love with typography. And in fact, uh, we're glad he did because... The Mac, since day one, has always had beautiful typefaces or fonts. In fact, for many of us, that's where we first became aware of typefaces and typography is on the Macintosh. In the early days of Macintosh, when people were using it for uh, desktop publishing, you'd sometimes get documents with 20 different weird-looking fonts in them uh, because people were so excited. Because you may not remember this, but in, up till then... You really didn't have a choice. <laughs> you just had to print with whatever the printer uh, would print out with. Mac OS comes with hundreds of beautiful fonts, but there are even more. I guess Apple probably decided they wanted to, you know, save space, except I don't know. I'm not sure why they put them in, but then didn't install them, but you can very easily. And it starts with a program you may never have used, but as there's a font manager that comes with the Macintosh. In the early days of the Mac, we'd actually install third-party font managers. But Apple installs one now, comes with all Macs. It's called Fontbook. So go ahead and start Fontbook. You'll find it in your Applications folder. And then you can see on Fontbook, there are on the left some ways you can narrow down fonts. There's all fonts, computer fonts, users' fonts. There's English fonts and fixed-width fonts. These are smart collections. There's fun collections. There's modern. There's PDF, traditional, and web. But I want you to go to all fonts because that's going to list all the fonts installed in your system. But wait a minute. If you're using Catalina, you might notice some of these fonts are grayed out. Apple decided not to install these, but to let you know they're available, they put them in the font book. You can click on them and you'll see a grayed out version of the font itself. Now, in this case, this is, it looks like a, to be a Chinese font. Some of them are non-Roman. You're probably not going to want them. But there are some beautiful Roman fonts available. Let's go uh, down through the list till we find one. These are all non-Roman for different languages. They're actually beautiful themselves. It might even be fun to play with. That's the Balu. And there's another Chinese font. But I'm going to scroll down a little bit to some of the English languages. This is one I really like. It's called Canela, Canela Regular. It's quite beautiful. There's also deck and there's text. This is the Canela family. How do I get these fonts, you might ask? I want Canela Regular, regular italic bolded. Right click on any of the any of the grayed out fonts and simply say add fonts. It'll actually add that font. Oops, nope, that's the wrong one. 
take two. Right-click on the font and select Download Canela Family. It'll say uh, this selection includes fonts which must be downloaded in order to be enabled. Do you want to continue? Yes. And if you're going to do this a lot, check that box. It says you don't have to ask me every time. It won't take but a minute to download the fonts. They come in very quickly. And now I have access to everything in this family. Regular, regular italic, bold and bold italic. If you want deck, same thing. Download the family. And it'll all download. You see how quickly. There's quite a few beautiful fonts in here. This is one of the things that I just love about the Macintosh. Look, there's Domain, a display font. Now, in the old days of fonts, there's Founders Grotesque. In the old days of fonts, we had to be a little careful because having too many fonts could really slow down a Mac. It turns out every font that we have in here, and these are all OTF files, every one of these is a little program. Fonts are programs that describe how to display characters on the screen. A maliciously crafted font can actually be a problem, could be malware, but also uh, some of these fonts can be poorly crafted and cause reliability issues. So my recommendation, if you're going to get a font um, that's not in, you know, originally installed, let's see, there's a, this is another, not Clee or Clay, some really beautiful non-Roman fonts, but there are also some gorgeous Roman fonts. Let me find the one that I really like. Oh, Publico is a fun one for your desktop publishing. I really like quotes. This is quotes caps and quotes script. That's a beautiful kind of brush stroke font. Here's Sobe, script regular. Oh, this one's a little unusual, spot mono. Uh, this is a mono type, probably useful for sign making, uh, but you could use it. Mono means it's mono width, it's regular fixed width, which is means it's very good for things like chat rooms or terminal displays. This might make a good terminal font. So let me download and install uh, this font. There it is. Now I have spot mono, and you can see it's no longer grayed out. So it's worth checking because there's some very nice fonts in here, including Canela, Publico, Quotes, and, of course, the Spot Mono. Now, I haven't experienced any slowdown on modern machines. My system at home has nearly 300 fonts installed. I've installed a lot of fonts. In fact, if you want to strike up a conversation with a computer programmer, ask them, <laughs> ask them which font... Uh, they use. You see, I collect fixed width fonts for terminals and programming. And notice there are a few grayed out ones here, but all of them are non Roman, so I'm not going to worry about those too much. But now my spot mono is in there. My favorite coding font right now, I love Fira Code. That is a font that supports ligatures, which makes it really nice for coding. But my favorite isn't installed on this machine. So I'm going to show you. It comes from a very talented font designer named. David Jonathan Ross, and uh, he is publishing it through the Font Bureau, which is one of a few, a handful of places I'd recommend to get your font. So the way you get this font is uh, you can either Google input font or just uh, go to the input.fontbureau.com. This is a coding font that is free, but very nicely designed. It comes again from David Jonathan Ross. And is kind of cool because it can be modified to fit your needs. So if you want to see what this font can look like, go to the preview. Notice you can try different sizes, but you can also try different features. Here's the input sans, input serif, input mono is the one I use for coding. And you can even have, and I really like this from a coder's point of view, different letter forms. So you might prefer the kind of old-fashioned A or a more modern A. Same thing for the G. In fact, for coding, I prefer to use these more modern looks. Uh, I like to make sure that the I is really distinguished from the L. So for that reason, I choose these particular forms. I, you know, a zero that doesn't have a line or a dot in it is very useless for programmers, it's indistinguishable from an O. I like to have a slash through my zeros. And I like my braces to be a little less curly. So I can choose 
how I want that. And then I can download a version of this font with these particular letter forms. That's one of the things that's really cool about fonts is they're very flexible. And this input font is free for non-commercial use and great. So that's one place that's good to go, which is the Font Bureau, to get your fonts. Again, remember, a poorly crafted font can cause problems. It could even be intentionally malicious. So only get fonts from reliable places. I get a lot of my fonts from Adobe, fonts.adobe.com. Andy Anatko introduced me to a wonderful font maker called Comic Craft. They do comic book fonts and they often have sales. It's comicbookfonts.com. And as I mentioned, David Jonathan Ross, he has his own site. In fact, for people who love typography, he has a font of the month club that's pretty reasonable. That's djr.com. Now, if you want to learn about fonts and typography, it's fun to play with them, but you can go wrong, <laughs> either including too many fonts or choosing the wrong font. I highly recommend this book. It's called Stop Stealing Sheep and Find Out How Type Works. It's by Eric Speakerman. I have the second edition. The third edition is out now. It's available on Amazon. And it is not just a great book to learn about fonts and what makes fonts special and what makes some fonts better for some uses than others. You see, it's it's got lots of pictures. It's really a beautifully done book. A great way to learn about how to choose fonts and how to use fonts. Highly recommend it. Stop Stealing Sheep. You can find it on Amazon. It's a little pricey. I see I paid $45 for this skinny paperback, but it's one of my most cherished books, so highly recommend it. And most importantly, Let's give a profound thank you to Steve Jobs. If he hadn't taken that calligraphy class at Reed College back in the 70s, I don't know if we'd be blessed with so many beautiful and useful fonts on our Macintoshes and, frankly, on all our computers now. Uh, Steve started it all with Macintosh in 1984. Thanks for joining me this week on Hands on Mac. As always, brought to you by our great friends at ExpressVPN incognito mode doesn't hide your activity even at home your isp knows everywhere you go that's why i never go online without express vpn express vpn reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers protect yourself with express vpn the vpn i use and trust expressvpn.com slash hom if you go there today you'll get an extra three months of express vpn free when you sign up for one year package expressvpn.com slash hom expressvpn.com slash hom to learn more that's it for this edition of hands on mac go out go forth and font yourself <laughs> i look forward to seeing you again next friday don't forget you can get our uh, show uh, past episodes available at twit.tv slash hom they're also on youtube on our hands on mac channel if you are uh, going that route, make sure you subscribe. What is it? Subscribe and ring the bell? Or is the bell over here? I can never remember. <laughs> or go and find a podcast application and sub subscribe. So that way you'll get every episode the minute it's available on a Friday afternoon. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week on Hands on Mac. Hey, folks, it's Micah Sargent here, co-host of Smart Tech Today, right here on Twit.tv. Every single week, Matthew Casanelli and I sit down to talk about smart tech for the week. That's right. It can get kind of complicated, but there's a lot of news out there. There's a lot of products to dig through. There are a lot of questions to answer, and we try to do that all every single week. From voice assistants to wearables to smart garage door openers and lights, there's so much to cover and, well, so little time. So be sure to check it out. It's twit.tv slash STT. Huh, that rhymes. <laughs>